So I'll start with my uh, disclosures. Uh, I've received research funding in uh, recent years from NIH, uh, PCORI, uh, Amgen, uh, and uh, the Ameren Corporation, and I don't have any uh, financial uh, conflicts of interest. So um, I wanted to begin with uh, just talking about heart failure, uh, readmissions, uh, the basics. Um, this slide uh, is taken from the um, National Hospital Discharge Survey and uh, shows um, the uh, volume of uh, hospital discharges uh, uh, per um, uh, thousand um, uh, individuals. And uh, what you can see here uh, is uh, the trend over time, and you can see that it's been uh, going uh, going up um, from uh, 1997 to 2014. And you can see in the uh, blue line, uh, which, is, which represents uh, principal discharge diagnoses for males, and then the, the green line uh, represents, I'm sorry, the um, um, maroon line represents um, principal discharge uh, diagnoses in the thousands for uh, females. Uh, you can see that gender difference. And then uh, looking at all diagnoses for men in the green line and then uh, in the um, lighter blue line uh, for females. So again, you can just see that this is uh, going up, particularly as the uh, principal uh, diagnoses over the last uh, decade and a half. And uh, in addition to uh, the overall volume, you can see uh, here, uh, this is data uh, from Medicare, looking at length of stay. Uh, the blue line uh, here represents um, uh, length of stay, and you can see it's going down from a uh, mean in 2002 of roughly 5.5 uh, and uh, ending up about 5.3 uh, uh, in 2013, remaining relatively stable, uh, but, but going down nonetheless. Uh, inpatient mortality, uh, represented by the uh, red line, has also uh, dropped uh, significantly uh, over that same time span. And uh, the uh, age-adjusted or age-standardized uh, mortality uh, is represented by the dotted line below, and that, uh, even, even with adjustment, uh, that there has been a uh, drop in mortality, not as dramatic, but, but a drop still nonetheless. So we're making progress uh, with regards to uh, the uh, length of stay, as well as, uh, as, well as mortality. Uh, this slide um, is taken from uh, Medicare data as well, and really is meant to demonstrate the racial disparity in uh, heart failure admissions, and these are index admissions. We're going to uh, get to readmissions in just a moment. But the yellow line represents um, black males uh, with the uh, dotted line and black females with the yellow line and you can see that they are uh, higher than all the other uh, race sex groups. Uh, and while all groups are coming down, uh, the disparity still exists um, in going from 2002 to 2013. So uh, a, a downward trend um, for all race sex groups, but unfortunately uh, not a lot of closing of the disparity in uh, admissions. And now pivoting a bit to the focus uh, and that's readmissions. Uh, this slide uh, shows the 30-day readmission rates for various conditions, including heart failure. Heart failure is on the leftmost, represented by the leftmost bar uh, at 23 percent. Most general estimates uh, put that number around uh, a quarter or one out of every four patients being readmitted uh, within 30 days. The, these are the top 10 diagnoses uh, among uh, Medicare patients in terms of uh, readmission rates. And the intent of this slide is not necessarily to uh, show the difference between these, but really to give you a sense of sort of what the other diagnoses are that um, still have lower readmission rates uh, than heart failure. So uh, coming in second is um, schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders, uh, <coughs> respiratory failure, um, or, and number four, alcohol-related disorders. For the clinicians in the room, I think you'll appreciate how difficult it is to treat these subgroups and the fact that they still have lower readmission rates uh, than folks with heart failure, I think, is quite uh, telling. 
So uh, for the uh, folks who are primarily researchers or have uh, published scientific papers in the past, you all are probably familiar with this uh, process uh, of essentially trying to go from conception of an idea, carrying out the work, and uh, what is a metaphorical but sometimes feels like a literal gauntlet to get a paper accepted. Uh, and that's sort of depicted here in, in a sort of hyperbolic fashion, but sometimes, honestly, it does feel that way. Uh, unfortunately, our patients who have heart failure, who are discharged from the hospital, uh, have a, oftentimes, a much more perilous gauntlet uh, that uh, they are moving through in the post-discharge period, obviously with, with much more grave consequences than whether or not a paper gets published, oftentimes. Uh, their well-being and sometimes even uh, uh, their mortality. This slide uh, represents um, data from uh, Medicare and uh, in the left graphic uh, it shows the, um, for heart failure, uh, the different periods in the immediate 30-day uh, discharge period and then the percentage of, of folks that are readmitted during each of those discharge periods. So in that first gap, uh, day zero to three, you can see that about 13% of people are uh, readmitted uh, from day zero to seven. Uh, so in the first week, you can see that you're already up to about a third of folks who are discharged, who are gonna be readmitted, are readmitted in that first week. Uh, it really speaks toward the vulnerability uh, immediately after discharge. In the first half of the 30-day discharge period, uh, 61 percent, uh, well more than half, uh, who are going to be readmitted are readmitted during that time. So it, and you can just see from the, the curve at the bottom, which, which shows uh, numerically uh, the distribution of patients admitted at varying points, it really is during that early period in the first one to two weeks when most of patients uh, who are going to be readmitted are readmitted. The graphic to the right shows the uh, admitting diagnoses. Uh, for uh, folks who are readmitted. Uh, you can see heart failure there at the top, and then you see a number of comorbidities, uh, which probably will ring familiar with many of you, uh, renal disease, uh, pneumonia, um, and arrhythmia, um, sepsis. Um, so s sort of the usual suspects when we think about comorbidities uh, uh, complicating the care of uh, patients with heart failure. So, uh, Let's talk a little bit about risk factors for uh, readmission. Uh, on the left here, obviously during an index admission or when someone's in the hospital, there are a number of factors that may make them more uh, prone for readmission, some of which we've already talked about, male gender, older age, black race, comorbidities. Uh, depression, I actually uh, called out from the general group of uh, comorbidities. Comorbid um, mood disorders have been shown to be a real risk factor for readmission and then a number of other uh, factors uh, as well. The italicized um, factors here, I've tried to sort of separate the um, social determinants of health from more clinical uh, risk factors. So patients um, obviously go home and, and uh, there's this post-discharge period, and then there are a number of outpatient factors, many of which are overlapping, but then some that are unique to the outpatient realm, uh, the patient's ability to engage in self-care, uh, their level of social support oftentimes, which is uh, aimed at uh, helping them to adopt self-care behaviors, uh, low income uh, or wealth. Uh, access to care is very interesting in that it's not just access to uh, any uh, ED or any uh, outpatient clinic or any hospital. Uh, it actually oftentimes, determ it also oftentimes depends on what sort of hospital uh, someone may be uh, may have access to. Uh, there have been a number of studies uh, that have shown that minority serving hospitals um, tend to have uh, higher readmission rates across chronic disease um, conditions, uh, heart failure being chief among them. This uh, slide also informs the architecture of chronic disease management programs. Uh, I thought that this, that was probably a little bit beyond the scope of this talk, but Looking at some of these factors, and if you think about some of the multifaceted chronic disease management programs uh, that oftentimes involve telemonitoring uh, and uh, more frequent contacts, 
uh, they oftentimes are aimed at uh, ameliorating uh, many of these risk factors in this outpatient column. So there also are racial differences in, in readmission rates as well. Uh, this is uh, data from a uh, New, York, uh, from the New York hospital system. And uh, in the uh, leftmost cluster of bars, you see 30-day mortality, and you see that uh, whites have higher 30-day mortality than non-whites, uh, as well as higher uh, one-year uh, mortality. But then when you look at readmission rates, you can see that uh, African Americans and Latinos uh, have higher readmission rates both at 30 days and 90 days uh, compared to whites, and that is uh, controlling for uh, clinical factors as well as um, sociodemographics. Uh, these uh, higher readmission rates obviously have implications, uh, one of them being cost, and you can see here uh, the cost of post-discharge care in the uh, 30 days after discharge stratified by race, and you can see here that um, African Americans in the second column uh, have the highest cost uh, in that post-discharge period. Uh, the, in the initial admission cost uh, denoted by the blue portion of the bars is roughly the same. Uh, the 30-day um, uh, post-discharge cost is a little bit higher among African Americans and Latinos, but then you can see the cumulative one-year cost is where the differences occur. So again, uh, the cost of care, uh, there seems to be a uh, widening of a gap uh, in that uh, post-discharge period, even beyond 30 days. Uh, because of the cost implications, uh, Medicare has uh, undertaken a number of uh, different avenues to try to, um, try to address this. One of them is the Hospital Readmissions Reduction Program. Uh, it's a mandatory program. Um, it requires public reporting for hospitals for the 30-day uh, risk standardized readmission rates. They created financial penalties for those hospitals with higher readmissions. And then the, um, what they found is that excess heart failure readmissions have been found to be the dominant uh, driver of the penalties that were assessed. Uh, un unfortunately, um, some of the more recent, just earlier this year, uh, analyses of uh, data uh, in the wake of uh, the implementation of uh, HRRP uh, show, is sh uh, shown in uh, summarized in this table. Um, when you look at um, comparing pre-implementation phase and the post-implementation phase when they were um, levying penalties, you can see for 30-day readmission rates uh, the, there was a reduction um, in 30-day readmission rates, but unfortunately there was an increase in mortality. Uh, and that same uh, discrepancy was true for one, at the one-year time point as well, uh, decreased readmission rates but higher mortality. So it does raise the concern that perhaps this program is actually causing harm and probably will be a major source of sort of discussion and, and consternation uh, as thinking about how this program needs to be updated uh, moving forward. Uh, one voluntary program that uh, Medicare uh, implemented was the Bundled Payments for Care Improvement Initiative. And uh, participating hospitals could essentially opt for a uh, bundled payment where they got one payment for an admission and then they would be responsible uh, for all the care that was needed at varying time points, 30, 60, and 90 days. And they could choose from one of many chronic conditions, heart failure being one of them. Uh, this is um, data from uh, uh, that program, and there are a number of chronic conditions listed here. I'll direct your attention to congestive heart failure, which is the third cluster. And you can see uh, when they looked at match controls uh, that unfortunately there are very few differences uh, in baseline and the, um, and the intervention phase. So again, uh, despite efforts, uh, the, the um, policy programs aimed at cost uh, don't seem to be having uh, the impact that, uh, that Medicare uh, thought that they would. The, one of the things that's been shown to be uh, effective for reducing readmissions is early follow-up. Uh, and this was demonstrated in uh, a uh, landmark paper in 2010 by, led by uh, Adrian Hernandez uh, at Duke and looking at uh, data from two large national registries, uh, optimize and get with the guidelines. And they showed that, uh, and this is depicted here, 
uh, that early follow-up within um, seven days, uh, early follow-up is defined as within seven days, uh, actually uh, reduced uh, readmission rates, and you can see that in that first cluster there. Uh, the reduction was less, um, uh, less uh, robust in looking at early follow-up with just a cardiologist uh, and then follow-up uh, with the same physician versus a longer time period. So this actually was uh, introduced into uh, heart failure guidelines now for the post-discharge period, and uh, increasingly uh, this is one of the areas uh, that's being stressed in terms of reducing readmissions and then really thinking critically about what the architecture of this visit looks like. Um, so what sort of things should be done during the visit? What should be assessed? Uh, since it's one, uh, one element that has been shown to be uh, more effective uh, than others and quite frankly is generally uh, feasible in, uh, in most, um, most settings. So with this last slide um, actually shows how well that's been adopted. Uh, the um, early follow-up within uh, seven days, you can see the blue line here. Uh, it's gone from it, it's, uh, in 2009, roughly half. Now 65% um, um, uh, of folks are being followed up, um, followed up within seven days. So that uh, demonstrates uh, the uh, effectiveness of uh, having the guideline and, and disseminating that information and um, hopefully uh, we will uh, begin to see some of the benefits of uh, this being adopted uh, more frequently. 